Today, I'm with Patty Olinger, the Executive Director of GBAC, my co-host on BioTalk. Patty, how are you doing? Pretty good. How are you, Jeff? Happy I'm good. Year, by the way. I'm in Ohio, where it's cold and dark and wintry. Yeah, I'm in Michigan, where it's cold and, and gray and no snow on the ground, which is very odd for January. So there's our positive. Yeah. Well, it's good to be back with you again for another episode. Today, we're going to talk um, an important message on remaining vigilant and keeping the momentum going on improving hygiene. I know, Patty, you live and dream better hygiene for everyone, uh, whether it's people or properties. And I think those watching this episode who are GBAC accredited facilities are going to notice a proverbial feather in their cap. Oh, um, absolutely. You know, and and Jeff, we've talked about this before. I'm a I'm a really big advocate for what I would call One Health, and looking at the UN Sustainable Development Goals, and you know there's 17 action packages, and it feeds into people's ESG. But my recent experience at a non-GBAC accredited facility, which was a five star hotel, you know, made me step back a little bit and you know pause. Um, are, you know, if we're going to get through this pandemic and be prepared for what's next, we need to do better. Well, uh, I know you and I have talked about that visit in a few times. Um, let's get into what was it like when you went to that hotel, a non GBAC accredited hotel? What was the experience like? Was it clean? Was it hygiene? Did you feel good about it? You know, um, I not most of the time only stay at GBEC accredited facilities, but sometimes either they're not available or let's say a conference um, is is being held at a, at a hotel. And so I'll go ahead and stay and just see what the competition is doing, you might say. And this was a five-star hotel. Um, I won't mention the name to protect good, them. Good, good. Um, but you know, you, they do promote the fact that they care about health and wellness and, and everything. And, you know, I obviously, when you and I go to hotels, when we go to convention centers, whether they're GBAC star accredited or not, we notice things. That's part of the nature of what we do. And, you know, you could start to see that, you know, people have really relaxed all of their protection as far as Personally, you didn't see a lot of masks, which you don't see that in a lot of places in today's world. Um, there was very few hand hygiene reminders or even hand hygiene um, hand sanitizer stations. Uh, so you started noticing that. And then, of course, you know, while you saw a lot of housekeeping staff, you noticed that a lot of their equipment was kind of outdated. But what really got me was when I went into my room one day, they had left what used to be <laughs> um, a microfiber towel. And I actually have it. Um, Let's see it. Okay. And you can see the, the bleach stains on it. Um, if you know what microfiber is supposed to feel like, this does not this does not have the prickly feels. This obviously was not a well-maintained piece of microfiber. And as you know, recently I've been going through how Patty takes care of her microfiber because it's a, something that people don't realize. This is plastic. And this what this feels like now and actually would be functioning as is just a piece of plastic spreading dirt and grime and, and germs around. This is yeah. not doing what it's intended to do. I don't think that's the goal is to spread dirt around and germs, but to get rid of them. No. And I, you know, what we're trying to move away from, which has been the mantra for, you know, ISSA for so many years is we don't, you know, we need to move past. It looks pretty and smells nice to actually doing it right. And it doesn't take any more effort. And in fact, I would argue that if they were actually using great, you know, a, a good microfiber, maybe a GVAC star registered microfiber, um, but a, a good microfiber that was functioning correctly, they would use less fluids, they would use less water, less disinfectant, less cleaner. And we know that they function very well and that even on their own, remove dirt, grime, and germs 
without, even as a dry microfiber towel. Yeah. Uh, Patty, you referred to your education of microfibers. I know we recorded a cool episode at uh, ISO Social North America. I'll put the link to that video down below in the description. So just scroll down for those watching this. It's great information on <laughs> what not to do and to do with the microfiber cloths. And I don't think bleach is part of that solution. No, it's not. And, you know, to even add on that, you know, I've been talking with, um, you know, Dave, who helped with that video um, and the e the CPI Innovation Center that, you know, we really need to put together a couple, you know, just short, you know, short videos on, okay, how do we clean? How do we wash? How, what kind of detergents should we be using for our microfiber? You know, how do we dry it? Yeah, obviously, if it's plastic, it'll melt if it's a really high temperature drying. And, you know, to go even beyond microfiber, there's so many different tools that we utilize on a day-to-day -day basis. How do we maintain these things so they function at utmost, you know, performance? Mm -hmm. Well, I hope, Patty, when you were at that hotel, which we didn't name, that maybe the housekeeper had a bad day, but you saw other things as well. So being GBAC star accredited is so important. What what should we expect when we visit a hotel when we travel, whether for business or pleasure? What what are the baseline expectations in your opinion? You know, it's very interesting because as I was thinking about this and I was looking at, you know, what's out there from, you know, what people are saying and, you know, Condé Nast, which is, you know, the especially luxury travel and everything, they talk about the 10 basic things a hotel must offer. And it doesn't matter if it's, you know, a lower end, you know, economy type hotel or a, you know, super luxury hotel. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was, it was kind of refreshing, actually. Um, again, coming from that, you know, my whole aspect of that one health, you know, thought process is that cleanliness is an absolute must. The number one thing on their list was cleanliness. And they even talked about while it's important initiative, recycling must not give way to the lack of hygiene. And those are really important concepts because if people aren't healthy, they, you know, they, they, they can't go to work. If they're not healthy, they're worried about, you know, being able to put food on the table and, you know, what to do with their kids. They don't think about the recycling part. Now, don't get me wrong. I am a huge, big advocate for sustainability and greenhouse gas reduction and climate um, issues, because when those are out of check, you know, let's face it, we know that you get more bacteria, more viruses that cause problems. So from my standpoint is we've got to look at it. And again, those UN Sustainable Development Goals and everybody's going to have their favorite, whether your water, you know, um, supported or not, they all have to work together and win. So that was one of the things that, you know, hygiene really needs to. Um, the other things on that Condé Nast list was adequate safety and security. Um, and those things that we think about, you know, um, comfort and in really it's the feel. Those hotels, whether it's a hotel, a convention center, um, an arena, a restaurant, how do you make your customers feel like they're special? And, you know, when you walk in and you see some of these things like hygiene not being taken care of, you start asking yourself what else is not being taken care of. Hopefully anyone watching this will understand that if they say it's clean and healthy, it needs to be. So Patty, thank you for your time today and joining me on this bio talk. I guess I'll let you go. You can go back to cleaning your house with that microfiber cloth. <laughs> yeah, or not. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. ISSA's media brands are the voice of the cleaning industry. From our websites to our daily news feeds. From ISSA TV, the ISSA YouTube channel, interview programs such as Straight Talk, and our flagship print and digital publications. ISSA's media brands keep you informed on the most relevant content impacting your business or organization. Access our resources at issa.com media.